<laughs> Today's spotlight is on Mayoa Arigoke. Hey, hey, welcome. I think you were okay. Did I get it close? I, I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> How about you say it for you say it for everyone. Say it, say your name for us. That that be okay. So hi everyone. My name is Mayowa Adegoki. See, you say, and it sounds so good when you say it too. It's like <laughs> that's my name. That's my name. So. <laughs> but thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> All right. So let me introduce you to Mayowa. That's a close Mayowa. Mayowa. All right, is an award-winning TV show host and international journalist and is a leading Nigerian media personality in Dubai, UAE. Currently, she is a foreign correspondent for one of Africa's leading news <laughs> stations, Channels TV. She reports on stories of global and African interests in the Middle East and has interviewed several high-profile personalities. She's an expert in public and motivational speaking, She's passionate about helping others find their voice and tell their unique stories, build confidence, and ultimately discover purpose. And she has a wonderful husband and son at home. You can find her on Instagram at the Lady Mayowa, M-A-Y-O-W-A, on Instagram. Check her out. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you, guys. There's so much energy. I just to get into the action. <laughs> <Try. Try. laughs> All right. So what I want you to do, feel free to tell us more about yourself, your family, your career, but do try to include something in there that we can't Google about you. Ooh, something you can't Google <laughs> about me. <laughs> we can't find on Google. Okay. So I, was I found a lot about you on Google. <laughs> I will start and maybe I, before the end of it, figure out what well, you can Google about me. <laughs> Oof, okay, so you know my name, you know what I do. I'll, um, I'll just tell you about my journey up until where I'm at right now. Okay. Uh, born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, so pretty much spent the better part of my life in um, Lagos, Nigeria and really good life honestly very um i was brought up in culture brought up in christ christian family um but growing up we, we weren't rich i wasn't born into a rich family right we're just like average middle or below average <laughs> middle of and but you know the life i lived really helped me appreciate things right i was able to appreciate the very mundane things about life, you know, being able to ride bike with a, you know, just play around the streets with the with the boys, um, being able to be grateful for life, for community, you know, little things like that. So I didn't have like all the expensive things or the expensive life, but I was able to appreciate what I had and just enjoy community, enjoy people, uh, enjoy being alive, being healthy. So I'm so big on things like that, wow. being able to appreciate the very little things about life. And that's sort of like where I'm coming from and being able to achieve my dreams. So my child, one of my childhood dreams was wanting to be a TV personality and being able to achieve that uh, from then on going to, to now becoming an international journalist. Ooh, child, anything's possible. <laughs> right. So, so I'm just this person who is very appreciative of life, and I believe strongly that you know anything is possible. Like you could be zero today and be a thousand tomorrow. It is possible. So, what you cannot Google about me? <laughs> I have something in my mind, but I don't think that's content. I'll go with it. A public platform. My, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know this one. This one. This one's easy. I'm not okay. sure you'd find on Google that the um, Dubai is the first place I've been outside of Africa. Mm. That's easy. I mean, it's not that exciting, but 
Yeah, let's let's but, keep the other one for elsewhere. You, you keep you keep your other one. <laughs> Check your Instagram out. You'll find out more about it there. <laughs> All right. So we talked a bit about this pre-show, but uh, you do a lot of reporting uh, in and on the Middle East, and I was curious, um, what's that like? I mean, you know, the fear, you know, making sure you say the right things, do the right things, you know, because it can be challenging with all the conflict going on. So I'm just curious, what is that like? What is that like being an international correspondent in the Middle East? So first off, sometimes I really do ask myself if I'm in the Middle East, and, mm. I exp and I'll explain why I say that. So obviously the UAE, um, which is a country, United Arab Emirates, Dubai is one of the Emirates, one of the seven Emirates. It's very different here, right? So this is the only country in the Middle East I've lived in. Uh, but I think that people who live in other parts of the Middle East will have different experiences. So the UAE is very accommodating. You know, there's this stereotype about the Middle East and Arabs. But when you're here in the UAE, it's a whole different story. Mm. So check this. You've got 10 million people who call this home, not just tourists, people who reside here. You've got about 90% of that as foreigners, expats, you know, people from over 200 countries. So you've got over 200 nationalities that call this place mm -hmm. home. So your neighbor could be Mexican, could be Filipino, could be American, British, could be pretty much anyone, right? So it's very different here. 10% of the population would be Emiratis, who are the, like the actual locals. And they're very forward-thinking people. Um, they're big on tolerance. So we, I'm a Christian, for example, and we're free. You're free to be a Christian. They're, they're churches. So you can go to church. Feel free to talk about your religion on social media because you know really religion is one of the big things that people talk about when you mention the Middle East. So as far as living in the UAE it goes, I think we are really we have the better side of things, right? But that said, you still have to be careful. Um, you know, you just have to be smart, be wise, right. mm -hmm. you know, um, read, read the room, if that explains it. So yeah, it's good. Have a great time, live your life, but read the room and don't overstep. They're just boundaries, unspoken boundaries you shouldn't cross. Okay. So I suppose if you leave here, you, you would know those boundaries and you just, well, if you yeah. stick to your side of the bargain, you'll be great and be fine. All right, Lizzie? So I didn't share this with you during pre-show, but I too am a journalist. Like, yes, I'm a professor at Howard, but my overall career, I'm a sports journalist here in the United States. I could States. tell. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so with sports journalism, it's a very male dominated profession. And I would imagine even, you know, in your part of the world, there are predominantly males that you deal with. So how was that transi transition? Like, how did you, as a, a black woman from Nigeria, how did you get into journalism and getting to the point where you are an award-winning journalist? How did you get people, how did you get your foot in the door? And how did you get people to respect you and what you do? Great question. That's an, that's an interesting question. So for you, it's the gender divide, right? Mm. Uh, a female in a very male dominated industry. For me, it was more the race type divide. Oh, interesting. Um, and okay. it's not like racism is going on. Well, some context to that. Anyway, um, <laughs> what I'm saying is here you have a very huge community that's filled with different, you know, different uh, colors, different people. You've got Americans, mm. you've got British, and you know, if you're American and British, you know that you are, you know, top of top of the food chain, right. pretty right. much. <laughs> that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're African, 
generally speaking, as a community, we're not there yet. Interesting. So coming as a journalist to this community, there aren't many people like myself doing what I do. So okay. I find myself at events and I'm, you know, I'm grace and fortunate to have access to certain places. So I get there and it's like, I'm the only black mm. or mm. one of two blacks. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, okay. Um, so that's, that's, that's the situation I find myself right. in. And I realized, so, so there's one thing that I learned really quick. Being in Nigeria, even though Nigeria is made up of so many tribes, over 200 and different languages, you know, mm -hmm. in Nigeria, first, you, you might identify, depending on, you know, who you are as a person, you might identify with your tribe first before you identify with the country. So I'm from the Yoruba tribe. So for some people, they're big on, I'm Yoruba first before I'm Nigerian, right? But I guess okay. my training as a journalist, I just typically identify as Nigerian first. Nigerian. And okay. when you're when you're in Nigeria, you are first Nigerian before you are African. But when yeah. I came out here, I became first African, then Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Because the African community is small in many ways compared to the larger society and compared to other communities such that we have to find strength in numbers. So now when I'm here, I'm first African. I'm first looking out for Africa. I'm first representing Africa. And so getting into places, um, high profile events and seeing that I'm like the only black or one of the very few black people, mm. I, I see that I have to represent. I have to bring my right. A game on, right? Because there's very few of me out, out here. You so I have to make with? up for every other person who's not able to get here. Yeah. So that's really my way, experience. Like I feel the same way, but like you said, in, in a different context. Because in the early part of my career, so I graduated from college in 98, and that's when I started my professional journalism career. And so for me, it was always not I'm the Black person in the room. I'm the woman in the room. Like I used to go into locker rooms where there were no other women. I used to cover games where I was the only woman. I, there were moments where um, security wouldn't let me into certain venues or certain areas of a stadium because I was a woman. Wow. So I had to go get my call, my male colleagues to assist me in going in. So yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying just from another side. Of the spectrum, yeah. if you will. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting, interesting to hear. Bobby, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. I think I think oh. I had to the game I had to play um, because you asked me how did I get a foot in the door. I had to understand very quickly what do I represent, what value do I bring, right? Mm. And even the authorities here, they've seen that gap. So obviously, you know that Dubai is really trying to attract the whole world, and they see yeah. that. Um, there's a huge market in Africa that they're trying to tap. So my being here, really, I'm here at the perfect time because I represent a demographic that they're trying to attract. Wow. So right. when I speak, oh, they listen. Yeah. And there's very few of me. So when I when mm -hmm. I say something, it's like, oh, yes, you should, I mean, she represents her. Uh -huh. um, a market we're trying to attract. So I think that has helped. Plus the fact that my organization is one of the top news um, stations in Africa, you know, were big in Nigeria, big in Africa. So very quickly, I had to play up the value that I bring to the Credibility. table. And I think that's one of the things that um, gave me, I mean, plus the grace of God, obviously, that's what gave me quick access to certain places. So I got here 2019, September, because I got married and then moved in. Uh, so a few months, you know, still floating in honeymoon, mode still trying to understand mm -hmm. still trying to understand the country the system i mean it's a whole new place different life entirely i've let my family i've let my career i've let my friends so trying to understand it and then bam 2020 corona says hello hi i'm here and everything shuts down but turns out that was yeah. the perfect time for me because everything's shut down and there's no distraction because right. they have to focus on who they have 
in here, not who's visiting because no one can visit. So now they were able to focus on the resources and the people that were in house. And I think that really helped me because now I didn't have to struggle through the noise, through all the millions of tourists to get attention. I sent one email and it's like, oh yeah, we can get that email real quick. So um, I think that worked out well here. Me. So now I'm, I'm waiting for everything to get back to normal because yeah. now I've laid the foundation and I know that it can yeah. only get better from here. Absolutely. I don't know if you get the same response in uh, here in the U.S., but why be rock? <laughs> <laughs> That's wow! It's uh, it sounds like you've had such an amazing journey uh, up until this point, and I really appreciate your outlook on life, just as far as appreciating small things. Because if you set that bar to just those things that you really need, happiness is yeah. pretty easy to achieve. So. Speaking of your adventures and your journeys, um, I want to talk to you about your bucket list items and specifically how zip lining became a bucket list <laughs> item and it never was. And I want to know about that experience. I want to know about your and I want to know about your found it on Google. Item. I found it on YouTube. <laughs> nice. That's Google. <laughs> So I married an adrenaline junkie, honestly. Ah. Um, before we got married, he's already done the, what's this one called? The one you jump out of the plane with the- Oh, skydiving. Skydiving. Skydiving, thank you. So I'm always mixing up skydiving and ziplining. In my head, they're like one and the same. But anyway, <laughs> he, he, already, he did that already. And I think back in Nigeria, you really don't have access to many adventurous activities, like, like re extreme sports, so to speak. Uh, you really yes. don't have much of that going on. But I think that I've always been daring. I've always loved adventure. Um, I've always wanted to travel the world. Uh, I'm not afraid of the stuff, yeah. right? So it's like I had it inside of me I just never got the opportunity to do it. Yeah. So getting here and these guys here, like they have it all locked down. They, <laughs> and you know, they're big on breaking records or oh, the biggest this, yeah. the longest that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They love it over here. So everywhere you turn, there's an adventure waiting just around the corner. I'm like, I'm in paradise yeah. right now. <laughs> so <laughs> it was the first day of, 2020 was January 1st, 2020. And it was a surprise. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just do a surprise. And then I tell my husband, let's drive. He doesn't know I already paid for the whole thing. And we're driving. And I'm like, guess what? We're going. We're going to the longest zip line in the world. He oh my God. <laughs> Where is that? Where, where's the longest zip line in the world? Where is it? It's, it's called Jabal Jai's Mountain. It's actually here in the UAE. So it's the longest oh, wow. zipline in the world. And the view, good Lord, it is breathtaking. So did that, like, <laughs> now catch this. He's the adrenaline junkie, but I'm the one encouraging him, like, dude, calm down. You can do this, because he was freaking out. Because this, this <laughs> mountain is so high. You have to go all the way up to the mountain. Wow. But oh, it was such a great goodness. time. And I'm wow. looking forward to doing more crazy stuff. So yeah, there goes my story. Wow. <laughs> yeah, nice. hey, bucket list. I don't really have a bucket list. I just want to do everything. Like just, yeah. just <laughs> do it. Travel, do anything. You know, life is life is relatively short. It is? And it's it's always good to take, yeah. I mean, come on. Back then, dudes <laughs> were living like hundreds and hundreds of years. Now we only limited to if you if you make 70 80 or 90 then you're in a good spot right yeah so like, live life you know do good and just have yeah. fun while you're doing it all right johnny um my question was you did mention you were a reporter in nigeria for i believe it was over six years what is the main yeah. difference in um the news you report in the uae than the news you reported in nigeria what was kind of like the main difference main difference is before i was just playing locally speaking of nigeria now the whole world is my oyster now i'm talking to the whole world 
yeah. because the 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 unique opportunity you have here in the UAE is the whole world is here. If you've got over two hundred nationalities living in mm -hmm. one place, so we're talking business people, we're talking mm -hmm. professionals, we're talking like different um, different groups of people. Pretty much, you have access to the entire world. We have access to different stories. So now, if yeah. before I was just telling stories about Nigerians, now I'm telling stories about everybody else. Mm. Nigerians, other Africans, Americans, you know, British, whoever has a story to be told, um, especially if, if it's of interest to Africa, then that's the person I want to talk to. So I think for me, it's just been that mental shift from thinking Nigerian to now thinking global and thinking world. So I think that's it for me. So there, there's a couple of couple of comments online. So Jeanette Brown says, yeah, she's been the only woman often. And uh, <laughs> Jacqueline Robinson says, I don't have any questions for, uh, but I wanted to say that I love Miss Adagoke's energy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm Nigerian. I've got to represent. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blood thing. It's in the blood. <laughs> it's in the blood. <laughs> Thank you. Thank any, you final, any final questions for uh, Mayoa? Mayoa? I do, you because it. you were just talking about, like, Rob asked about bucket lists, and Dubai is on my bucket list for Mine myriad too. reasons. Um, but how long you've you've been there since 2019? Is that right? Yeah, late late 2019. Do you love it? September, to be precise. Do you love it, Dubai? Is it is it fa as fabulous as? <laughs> <laughs> like yes, <laughs> yes, amazing. Honestly, like, and I love it for many reasons. Um, it is one of the most secure places in the world. Mm. Security is like big, right? Don't mess with Dubai police. Do not. <laughs> Those guys, uh, like they're on steroids. You know what they're doing. So <laughs> aside from the fact that it's a very secure, it's a very secure place to be. It's just how visionary the leadership is. Like they have thought everything out. Honestly, um, ease of movement. Just think about anything, honestly. And these guys have it on tap down. Like, and I love that. I love that about them. They're very futuristic, very advanced. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, they still have a level of not a level. They're still quite conservative, even though they're progressive. And I think that really sits well with me. I find myself to be a very progressive person, but conservative as well so i haven't just thrown caution to the wind and i think that's one thing i love about them that you don't necessarily find in the west because the west is just honestly going crazy by the day crazy 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 <laughs> i hope i haven't opened a pandora's box oh no no we that. talk bad about the west all the time <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I i love that about them and the fact that you know, this place opens to the entire world. So don't think, I think of, I don't think of it as just living here. I think of it as the, the next person I meet tomorrow could be someone from another country that tells me about an opportunity in that country. And I have access to that because information is power, knowledge is power. So being here where everyone else comes with ideas and opportunities not just here but across the world i think that's exciting for me so when i think of dubai i think of just the entire world and that's because of the people who are here so definitely i i would like to live here if possible forever wow How forever. wow well they clearly have great internet service so <laughs> they clearly have great internet service. They clearly have great shopping, but that's another conversation for a day. Oh yeah, yeah. That's money, money, money. I mean, yeah, but, hey, you know the, the you know the thing is, a lot of people when they come here, um, a lot of friends and like, oh, let's meet up here, let's do this. Let's, I'm like, chill. You are the tourist. You brought all your money to spend. 
that's not me. I live here. I've got a budget. <laughs> Try. I don't just hop around doing stuff. So I, I'll tell you one funny thing. So usually, you know, people would come here and just shop and shop and shop. I don't just shop. I wait for the sales. <laughs> yeah. I shop only when there are sales. Yes, because every <laughs> every dihon counts. So that's, because, that's one exciting thing. I always do because you're sales. there for the sales. For us tourists, they they don't let us know when the sales are coming up. <laughs> exactly. So as a tourist, you... say that again. No, I was just gonna say, unless you're an experienced shopper like myself, like I go into other countries knowing about the sale so i'm i'm ready for the shopping. <laughs> Good. not just for the shopping like i want to see the country i want to experience the culture but in my yeah. downtime as i'm sipping a cocktail i do want to go shopping as well so yeah. i'm looking forward to it like you know once we get out of this you know global quarantine um most of us are vaccinated here um, hopefully, you know, vaccinations will open up once I get my pet, my renewed passport back. Dubai is definitely on the bucket list, 100%. And maybe and you, I can you know who to call here. when you get here. Exactly. Oh, maybe yeah. I can look you up. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. I would love that. Amazing. I'm out of time, but I, I did have, I have one more question. I mean, so how is the, 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 the pandemic going in Ooh. Dubai where you are and in Nigeria? Okay, so oh, those are two different worlds, man. So <laughs> Dubai is on this very, well, the UAE generally is on this aggressive mission to have its entire population vaccinated by mid-year to the end of the year. And they're really doing a great job of it. I think even from the very beginning of the pandemic, they've been doing a great job. There was a slight hiccup uh, about December, January because they really opened up to tourists. And then we started seeing this massive spike in um, new cases, but they pretty much have it on the control. So right now, I think the only thing that reminds me personally that there's still a pandemic is because I have got to wear the mic go out. But without, you know, people that, like they're open, so tourists are coming. Uh, but you know, obviously, like the large crowds aren't permitted, so you're not allowed to congregate. In large numbers but it's pretty much very open we don't feel constricted it's compared to what you hear in other countries nice. um so here it's really good honestly but back home in nigeria there's still the challenge of vaccinations um mm -hmm. going on uh and now you're they're in that state where a lot of people have become relaxed right so they had mm -hmm. uh, a lot high cases in death well high relatively and then things, you know, sort of toned down a bit and everybody started relaxing. And now they talked about a new lockdown. So back in Nigeria, you know, it's, I wish it could be better, but I, I feel like they're lucky because they don't have the situation that's going on in Brazil or like mm. they had it in America India. or like they have it in yeah. India for instance. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think a lot of people are riding on that. But, hopefully it stays that way for for everyone's sakes i've got family there so oh yeah 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 okay all right well unfortunately that's all the time we have so we appreciate you joining us so much i mean we definitely loved your energy and your conversation thank you uh, we, we probably need to have you back at some point so let's see what's yes going please on. yes i You're totally amazing. love that there's so much we can talk about Awesome. And I know it's like midnight there. So I know you got to get back to your son and go get some sleep and stuff like that. Actually, it's like almost one o'clock in the morning over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. But I work from home so I can sleep in. It's fine. Oh, lucky you. All right. <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to have to, Gianna's going to reach back out. We'll get you back on and uh, have some more conversations. Thank about you so much, guys. Thank That's you for so joining. So just really quick yeah. before you go, just tell people where they can find you. Oh, you can find me on Instagram. Your best shot is to find me on Instagram at the Lady Myowa. Um, Myowa is M A Y O W A. So at the Lady Myowa. Um, yeah, Lady that's your Myowa. best shot. I'm always on Instagram. Always. Most All right. Well, we'll definitely see you again soon. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>